You remember we reported last month that three batches of banana boat sunscreen were recalled because they had traces of benzene, which is a cancer causing chemical. A little ironic considering the whole point of sunscreens is to help avoid cancer. But it is the continuance of a trend here. Several brands of sunscreen were recalled for the same reason last October. And last year, a New Haven company called Valisure released a report claiming that over a quarter of the sunscreens and after sun products they had tested had benzene in them, 78 in all. Well, Dr. Christopher Bunick from the Yale School of Medicine said, don't be mistaken, these were definitely cases of contamination. The benzene is not an ingredient and it's not a breakdown product of the ingredients. It was a manufacturing contamination and a lot of companies like Johnson & Johnson and others have taken steps to uh, increase their quality control uh, to make sure that, these, that this benzene is, is not being uh, in not propagating in their sunscreens. And there have also been questions about how accurate both the SPF numbers and water resistance ratings are. You know, the truth is that yes, there could can be some uh, positive or negative uh, range uh, based on what is there. As a whole, the industry is working to, to be better at having the, the number on the bottle, like the SPF, or having the water resistance accurate. And the FDA has sort of cracked down a little bit on making sure the labels have the rigorous testing behind them. So actually, I think we're in a better place than we ever have been, where the, the value of what you see in the store is pretty accurate. But Dr. Bunick said despite that, the much bigger problem is not manufacturing errors, it's user error. He said it's far more dangerous to use too little sunscreen or avoid it altogether. And I think that all of these sunscreens have their place. They're all very good, uh, despite some of the controversies that might be out there. Again, any sunscreen is better than no sunscreen. And that's the important thing. We're all for just, you know, trying to do good, accurate reporting on sunscreens, and there are problems. And by the way, a, a lot of other countries out in Europe have a lot more sunscreen ingredients that have okay. been allowed that the FDA seem to not want to give the green light to, at least not easily. Uh, ingredients that can make sunscreens a lot more tolerable for people, so you don't get chalky white or okay. you don't get too greasy and can't put on makeup. And then, and, and then it becomes a cyclical problem because a lot of these people don't put on sunscreen as often as they should because of these problems, that they can be too greasy or too chalky. So I'm curious to see if that ever changes. Either way, the take home is, is that even if sunscreens are not perfect, like Dr. Bunick said, any sunscreen is better, better than no than sunscreen. Nothing, right? Take right. it from the bald guy who's probably going to have to have <laughs> stuff start getting cut off me at some point because uh, basal cell carcinoma. I mean, it's so amazingly common, you know? Oh, yes. Yeah. Definitely.